This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Hello and welcome to Want to Hear Something Weird, a weekly weird podcast on Weird Wednesdays. Wow. With weird stories with your two favorite weirdos, your hosts. I'm Tom. I'm Laura. Laura, I, I want to, I guess, get right into it. Great. I don't want to mess around. You know why? Wow. So this week we're talking about a monster. The energy drink? No, a monster, not the monster. Not, I know you're used to always telling me, hey, pass the monster. <laughs> and I know, of course, I know what that means. Right. I know it's monster energy drink because you, you go through a, a couple of cases of, the, of those a week. But Yeah, you know, I don't like to sleep. <laughs> but this is a monster we're talking about. Okay. This monster, I'm wondering if you've heard of it. It's called the Flatwoods Monster. Mm. Have you heard of that monster before? Never have I heard. <laughs> never <laughs> have I ever heard of that monster before. I feel like this is a monster that's really on the rise lately. What do you mean? Uh, like people think that there's new sightings or whatever? Not necessarily, but on the rise in like pop culture. Oh. Like I feel like how, you know, maybe 20 years ago, nobody, nobody was talking about the Mothman. But mm-hmm. nowadays, like... <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say I think most people know who the Mothman is. That's probably not true. That's probably not most people. Not, definitely but, not. But a lot of people know yes. what the Mothman is. And I feel like the Flatwoods Monster is... A look- and if you don't know who the Mothman is, mm-hmm. check out our earlier episode. Yeah. I feel like the Flatwoods Monster is kind of uh, making a comeback in, in that same way, in that same vein. Not the corners of pop culture that I hang out in. Well, I'm a tastemaker, so I'm in a lot of uh, uh, cutting a- cutting edge things. I'm seeing stuff before everybody else. Wow. So I'm telling you, you know, keep an eye out in the future. Yeah, of course you're not seeing it yet. You're not as plugged in as I am, but uh, you'll start seeing it eventually. I'm so lucky to have you as a co-host. <laughs> Give it five or ten years, you'll start seeing the kind of stuff that <laughs> I'm seeing right now. Okay, so this happened in West Virginia. Same place as the Mothman. Yeah. And this is also an Appalachian monster. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's like Appalachian monsters are really making a comeback. That is definitely true because (laughs) that's true in the corners of pop culture that I do hang out in. Oh, like stories about creepy Appalachian. Like true crime. Well, I mean, there's so many. Or or like uh, mysteries. Yes, but people like and lore. There's mm-hmm. so much lore in that area, and you know, going out into the woods at night or being out at night in like the country is, you know, like it's kind of like a unwritten rule. Um, but also the fact that the Scottish Highlands. Do you do you know about this? Yeah. And Appalachia used to be like the same mountain range. Oh, really? So that huh. so you didn't know so. A lot of a lot of Gia time, yeah, and a lot of lore kind of comes from that. Just talking about how ancient those mountains are. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I think maybe it's just like we don't really think about how remote some places are in Mm -hmm. Appalachia, and like just how like sparsely populated, how how far you can go without seeing like a single person. Yes. Uh yeah. So just kind of it's a weird spooky place. It's a good place for spooky things to happen. Mm-hmm. So this particular happening happened on September 12th, 1952. So this predates the Mothman even. Oh wow. In a small town of Flatwoods, West Virginia, an extraordinary event unfolded that would become one of the most intriguing UFO encounters in America, American history. As darkness fell, four young boys, Edward May, Freddie May, Neil Nunley, and Tommy Heyer, 
were playing on the lawn of Flatwoods Elementary School. Suddenly, they witnessed a bright light streaking across the sky, appearing to crash into a hillside on G. Bailey Fisher's farm. Mm -hmm. Excited by what they'd seen, the boys decided to investigate. I always like a UFO sighting that starts with a crash. Because yeah. then, you know, presumably something's going to be here. And actually, I'm going to talk about it later. But this has a few things that I feel like are in common with the Varinia yeah. uh, UFO slash alien case, which I was also thinking doing an episode about. We have to do one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just going to do this one. But Flatwoods first. We have to start with history. Yes. One at a time. <laughs> On their way to the crash site, they stopped at the May family home to tell Kathleen May, Edward and Freddie's mom, about the strange occurrence. Kathleen, intrigued by the boy's story, decided to join the investigation. It was like that, too. Like a, a mom that's game for... Oh, yeah. Like, you boys say a UFO crashed at Old Man Bailey's farm? Like, or, Let's go or check Old it. Man Bailey Fisher's? Like, yeah, hold on. Let me get my purse. I'll come with you. <laughs> um... So she called on Eugene Lemon, a National Guardsman, to accompany them. This is somebody else that lived in town. Okay. And he was young. I think he was like 17. Okay. He was, you know, uh, and I think these boys were probably, I think they're all around like 10 to 12-ish. Okay. So, you know, it makes sense that she's like, I, I don't know what the deal with if she was married, if she had a husband or not, or, mm -hmm. you know. She was a single mom and she was, or maybe her husband was like, I'm not, no, I'm not going with it. I'm yeah. Kids to go investigate, go get the, 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 the uh, lemon boy next door. He <laughs> just became a national guardsman. It, this is, it's his duty to help you. Yeah, maybe. So the group, along with the family dog, Richie, set out towards the farm to investigate the mysterious object where it seemed to have landed or, and or crashed. Upon reaching the site, the group observed a pulsing red light. Eugene Lemon shone his flashlight up the hill, revealing a sight that would haunt them for years to come. There before them stood a creature unlike anything they had ever seen. It was described as being about 10 feet tall with a head shaped like a spade. So you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like a like the the suit of yeah. cards? Yes. Or, you know, just like a shovel head. Yeah. Its body appeared to be covered in a dark metallic dress, but the most interesting aspects were its twisted clawed hands mm. and eyes that glowed glowed in eerie orange color. The witnesses reported that the creature seemed to hover above the ground. A strange sickening mist hung in the air around it. Uh. Suddenly, the monster hissed and glided quickly toward the group. Panic set in, and they turned and fled in horror. And I, I think it's in this next part I talk about the mist, but that's one of the things that reminds me of the Varinia, was that a lot of those reports have to do with the strong smell of ammonia. Right. Coming off the creature, but also like at the crash site, mm -hmm. uh, which people have hypothesized could be because the this creature breathed ammonia instead of mm -hmm. oxygen that we breathed, and that's you know once once the ship cracked open, that atmosphere escaped and it was running around. And people that saw it also say it seemed like it was having trouble breathing. It was you know really struggling. So I think that's interesting that this thing also had a weird smell to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But also a very unique looking thing. Uh, what was the skin? The skin was described, I believe, as... A, uh, let me see. As, well, I'm seeing a dark metal dress. I believe they said they, or a metallic dress seemed like it was like what it was wearing. Okay. Like it, it was all kind of one... One individual garment, I guess, but not garment. Like it also kind of looked like a robot. It also kind of almost looked like from the drawings that I've seen, almost looked like a, a Dalek from Doctor Who. Like, you know, just kind of this big, like, now crappy looking robot, like a 1950s oh, yes. era robot. Oh, huh. That's um, interesting. Yeah. So in the days following the encounter, 
some members of the group experience unsettling physical symptoms. Mm. They suffered from throat irritation, vomiting, and nausea that persisted for days. While these symptoms were initially dismissed as side effects of hysteria, it's worth noting that they are consistent with exposure to mustard gas. Mm. An intriguing detail that adds another layer of mystery to the incident. Kathleen May and Eugene Lemon, the two adults, reported the encounter to local authorities who searched the area that night but claimed to have found nothing. So, yeah, it's basically, you know, their word against uh, nobody. I I don't (laughs) think anybody's saying necessarily like, no, I was with them. They didn't see that stuff. But uh, right. Yeah, which I think is part of why this isn't a super well-known t- case because so much of it relies on just, you know, firsthand mm-hmm. uh, accounts. There's no physical evidence. I don't even think that there's like any evidence that they were actually sick. You know, there aren't mm-hmm. medical records or x-rays or anything like that mm-hmm. uh, done. So it's just kind of Taking at their word, and I mean, it could have been hysteria. Like, you could, I could, if I saw something like that, I think it'd probably make me feel ill for a few right. days, have symptoms manifest in weird ways. Maybe they scream themselves hoarse from being so scared. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, or it could be a symptom of anxiety or something Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's sort of like manifesting in the physical way or just like yeah just kind of like they experience some kind of trauma frankly yeah and they were just looking to have a good time and they saw (laughs) this terrifying creature yeah i mean in fairness what they expect to find if you run after the crash ufo but yeah right the and the getting sick thing afterward, I've heard that a lot with in alien encounters. Mm. A lot of people chalk it up to radiation. Yeah, yeah. So the mustard a lot gas of, is interesting. Uh, accounts of radiation, which is like a very interesting aspect to at least the U.S. government's like I don't know what you would call it. I guess secretive nature around all this stuff is that there are servicemen and women that have been injured Mm -hmm. in some of these you know alleged encounters that then have had their medical records kept from them right uh they don't even know what's going on right you know which again you could say all right take the ufo thing out of it completely let's just say it was experimental technology Okay, well, did that experimental technology have something that could have given somebody radiation sickness, you know, and in in which case shouldn't that be something that person knows about? Right. But yeah, anyway, they got sick. And even though there aren't many sightings of this monster, they weren't the only ones that saw it. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. So, shortly before the infamous encounter on Fisher's farm, another sighting was reported by Mrs. Audra Harper near the town of Heaters, about five miles north of Flatwoods. Mm. There's some interesting town names here. Heaters (laughs) and Flatwoods. Yeah. Uh, I was curious if you had read anything about where the name Flatwoods came from. No, or I assume quite... it's some kind of flat woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but to be honest, it sounds, you know, mountainous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, the, the flatwoods monster is up on a hill. Doesn't sound so flat to me. Wow. Maybe that's what it drew him to this place in the first place, you know? You yeah, like, misnamed well, yeah. this place. Um, <laughs> so, w- w- again, what's interesting about this is this encounter was reported before the the encounter that you know is the most famous harper and a friend were walking through the woods to a nearby store when they notice a ball of fire on one of the hills 
At first, Harper dismissed it, assuming it was a neighbor, quote, fox chasing. However, when she looked back, the fire had vanished, replaced by the tall, dark silhouette of a man-shaped figure. Terrified, Harper and her friend fled, escaping among the rocks and boulders on the hillside. So I couldn't find if it, if they, you know, reported any of the same, like, uh, physical characteristics, other than it just being a tall, mm. you know, vaguely human-shaped thing. Uh-huh. But I think the the fact that there was a, what they thought was a fire that attracted their attention is uh, an interesting detail, since right. that's the same thing that uh, the boys and their mom saw earlier, mm-hmm. which I think is also interesting because that is similar to what was reported in the Las Vegas UFO incident earlier this year or last year, where they right. where there was a you know what looked like a meteor, and this is on video crashing mm-hmm. into supposedly somebody's backyard, a family's backyard, and they said they saw these like ten feet tall creatures back there. So interesting. Mm-hmm. Look at if you see a fire run, because <laughs> it's either a fire or it's an alien spaceship, and either way, you don't want to have anything to do with it. <laughs> so that happened before the the you know most famous Flatwoods incident, but the day after the Flatwoods incident, another strange encounter occurred near Strange Creek. Of all Sounds places. Strange. About 20 miles south of Flatwoods, George and Edith Snitaus- Snitowski, I want to say it is, along with their 18 month old son, were driving on Route 4 between Clay and Braxton County when their car suddenly died. Hmm. How would you feel if we were like driving on a you know desolate road and the car just completely died oh i would be so upset <laughs> just everything turned off the That's electronics and, the engine and frightening yeah yeah i mean regardless of what caused it frightening mm-hmm. but nine times out of ten it's some kind of regional monster so as they sat stranded on the deserted road a foul sulfur smell filled the air and their baby began to cry. E. You never want that, because that could also be the devil himself. He also smells like salt. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Oh. A stra- which is like one of those things where people connect like, oh, is, are, are like, is the devil a misinterpretation of some kind of extraterrestrial that was on the planet, mm. you know, being bad to people? And anyway, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> Where am I? As they sat, oh yeah, they smelled it. A strange bright light appeared, and the couple witnessed a 10-foot-tall creature hovering in front of their car. The Snitowski's description of the creature was similar to the Flatwoods sighting, with one key difference. This time, the monster wasn't wearing its spade-shaped hood. Instead, its head was described as reptilian Mm. and bony. The creature allegedly dragged its lizard-like hand across the hood of the car before drifting away into the woods. As soon as it disappeared, the car restarted and the couple sped away. The, <laughs> George Snitowski later recounted this experience for Mail Magazine in July M-A-L-E? 1955. M-A-L-E Magazine, which I, I'd like you to get me a subscription to for my, my birthday. Okay, I'll look into it. I mean, honestly, if 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 there was a magazine called Mail Magazine, it was just yes. full of stories Paranormal, like this, I'd yeah. be real into yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. So it sounds like this was a nice monster. It, a nice monster? It scraped the claw. It scraped its claw over it, the It uh, ran hood. its claw over, and the car restarted because of it. No, the car restarted because it went away. No, so you think it stopped because it had shown up. I thought it just, it was like, oh, these people, their car died. Oh, you thought appeared. the thing showed up to fix their car for yeah. them? No. The How th- do you know? <laughs> I think the thing showed up. That's what caused the car to die. I and it scraped, scraped the hood and said, you know, for whatever reason, 
you know, it, like it was going to eat the baby, but it is like, oh, this baby's too old. I only like newborn babies. You know, it's like a friendly guy trying to make a joke about, oh, that baby's so cute. I want to eat it. <laughs> I could eat him. <laughs> yeah. So also, I mean, like I said, this was the day after the other sighting, which is interesting. Uh, oh, really? The, the first sighting that I talked about. Oh, yeah. wow. So this is the next day, like I said, about 20 miles away. I thought it was five. <laughs> no, the other one was five. Oh, this oh, is, oh, right. You're right, thinking right. of heaters. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm talking about Strange Creek. <laughs> but but yeah, interesting that apparently that spade shape was a hood of some kind. Oh. But I don't know. You don't want a, a reptilian bony head. That doesn't sound friendly. That doesn't sound nice. Oh, I don't want to hang out with him <laughs> i want him helping me i'll call triple a thank you very much yeah while the flatwoods monster hasn't been seen since these 1952 incidents its impact on the rural community has been significant the legend has become deeply ingrained in local culture in flatwoods an ice cream shop called the spot offers a photo opportunity with a painted version of the monster a museum dedicated to the monster's story operates in the nearby town of Sutton. Perhaps most striking are the five huge chairs built and painted in the monster's image that have been erected around the county. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and I saw one of them. I think it was like outside City Hall. I mean, maybe that's why we're hearing more about it, because these small towns are realizing that this is like, you know, there's tourism money to be mm -hmm. had. Yeah. Um, sim, you know, very similar to the Mothman, like mm -hmm. Point Pleasant, you know, didn't always like embrace all right. of that, so especially after it happened, you know, it's traumatic. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's still traumatic for like some people that, that are alive and live there. But, but yeah, you know, they've got the statue, they've got festival, they've got, oh, do they have, yeah, a festival? they've got, at least like one museum there, you know, museum slash gift shop. Mm. And I think I'm sure probably some other theme, you know, Mothman coffee or whatever, things like that. I know at least the I think the festivals become like a pretty big thing. I think it's one of those things that's been getting like bigger and bigger every year. Oh. Um, I would like to go to one of these festivals. Yeah, we that'd keep be cool. I mean, about. that's, you know, I'm sure, mo of course, most of it's about Mothman, but there's not always new Mothman news. I'm sure a lot of it's just about cryptid and paranormal yeah. uh, type stuff. And you can find like minded weirdos there. <laughs> the Flatwoods Monster story remains a fascinating piece of American folk. Oh, uh, this is, yeah, I don't need to read all this stuff. What's your take on this monster? What do you think about this monster? Well, I'd never heard of it, and this is pretty fascinating. Oh, I uh, oh. my last note here I wanted to bring up that I wanted to mention. The original location of the 1952 sighting is on private property. Trespassing is not advised. Visitors are encouraged and said to visit the museum and see the monster chairs. <laughs> So I guess there is a small museum there, too. It's monster like, chairs? The chairs that are painted like oh, you know, the right, Flatwoods right, Monster. Right, right. Yeah. I was picturing like, like a very chair. large chair. <laughs> the chair the chair that uh, the Flatwoods Monster famously sat in once. Well, I was going to say that that was cool, a cool story, but then you told me about the museum and I take it back. <laughs> because uh, museums are for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, I had never heard that at all before. So that's interesting. Yeah. It's funny because I feel like sometimes stories like this seem to get discounted because they sound like too fantastical, like the, the monster mm -hmm. itself, like the right. description of it, which is weird. You know, I, I guess everybody's different in what they'll not necessarily even what they believe, but what they'll entertain. Yeah. So I guess in in that way, something like Loch Ness Monster or Sasquatch, it's like, well, technically, theoretically, there could be a reasonable explanation for this that's still cool, that right. involves us discovering an unknown species right. uh, that, you know, doesn't have anything supernatural about it. Right. And even to that degree, you know, your standard UFO sighting 
or even UFO landing with, you know, little gray aliens coming out. Right. Uh, which people understand that it's like, oh, they kind of look like us. Okay, I get it. Yeah. But then when you get these descriptions of these like weird things that sound like they're from a 1950s sci-fi movie, people don't believe it. Right. And it's like, well, that, why is that any less believable? Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, too, you know, it, it's not... It's fascinating, but it's not necessarily, there's not a ton to the story, I guess. Like, there's the sighting and the smell. Yes. Right. But there's not, in every case people saw it, either they ran away mm -hmm. or the thing Wrapped ran away in. or vanished in some way. Right. So there wasn't any kind of significant, you know, no, nobody's claiming they were abducted by this thing or attacked by this thing. I guess it's scraping its claw on the hood is the closest to like physical contact. And there's no uh, follow up, you know, there's no possible sort of. Yeah, nobody's claimed to have seen it since yeah. then, since that year. No, I mean, no real explanation either. Yeah. Yeah, nothing beyond the standard. I guess the, the very popular one is that it was an owl. That that people were mistaking an owl in a tree that, you know, it's light reflected off its eyes and the silhouette of the tree somehow looked like some kind of a body or whatever. And mm -hmm. that's what they saw. And that's what okay. you know, caused them to scream and run away. Mm. But again, it's like, especially back then, like you're going to call the cops over that then, you know, something you saw for like a split second. Yeah. Like, I'd have to be pretty sure before I call the cops to say, look, I, I, there was a green monster with red eyes floating in the air yeah. uh, that smelled like sulfur coming towards me. That's true. Especially, yeah, you're right. In those days. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and especially now anyone like would a, hop on, you know, TikTok and yeah. be like, you won't believe what <laughs> yeah. I saw. But yeah, especially in like a rural community like that, which is where why it's I think small and more... everybody's just going to know you as the person that called the sheriff about a UFO. Yeah. You know, that's going to be your family mark for yeah. probably uh, generations. Yeah. So I believe them. I believe these Flatwoods residents. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm into it. Yeah. All right. Well. That's it for this week. If you like the show, giving us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify is very helpful, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you to everybody that's done that already. If you have a story that you think we should talk about or that you'd like to tell us about, you can email us, wannahearpod at gmail.com. You can also find us on the most social media platforms, at wannahearpod. Thanks for listening. Want to Hear Something Weird is a Clamor Audio production distributed by the Cloud 10 Network. Hosted and executive produced by Tom Reynolds and me, Laura Anderson. Executive produced by Aaron Hilliard. Clamor General Manager, Rich Statter. Associate Producer, Ethan Aronson. Post-production supervised by Devin Ruskin. Production Assistant, Samara Mullick. Special thanks to Sim Sarna and Saiba Krieger at Cloud 10. 